video, we'll discuss fail-safe functionality with electric actuators. There are two modes of fail-safe upon loss of power. The first is fail in last position. Basically, this means that if power is lost, the actuator will not move, and the valve cannot backdrive the actuator to arrive at a new position. Typically, this is achieved through the worm and worm wheel gear ratio being such that backdriving is impossible. Fail in last position is very common as it is easily achieved with a proper gear ratio selection. The second fail safe mode is fail to safe position. This means upon loss of power, the actuator will move to a predetermined position. This might include fully open, fully closed, or some specific point along the stroke. For clarity, note that we are talking about fail safe in the case of power loss. There's also a function in electric actuators for emergency shutdown, or ESD. This is where with main power still available, a signal is sent from the control room telling the actuator to go to its predetermined ESD position. This may be, again, fully open, fully closed, or some point in the stroke. Obviously, with main power still available, stroking to an ESD position is an easy proposition for an electric actuator. In order to achieve fail-safe position upon loss of the main electrical power, here we are talking about some other means of power needing to take over to operate the fail-safe stroke. There are three primary methods to achieve a fail-safe stroke on loss of main power to an electric actuator, supercapacitor, battery backup, and mechanical spring return. There are advantages and disadvantages to each method, and we'll walk through each of them. But we at Emerson are convinced mechanical spring return is the best and most reliable method for fail-safe on an electric actuator. Supercapacitors are one way to achieve a fail-safe stroke on loss of main power. Capacitors can store a lot of energy in a small and lightweight package, allowing the actuator to be compact as well. However, capacitors require recharge time, which may prevent them from stroking again if power is intermittent. They also have a limited life and may require maintenance. Lastly, and most critically, supercapacitors still use the motor and electrical system within the actuator. So you think about it's a fail-safe function, but what if in the loss of main power, there was damage to the electrical system of the actuator, say in a severe lightning storm? The capacitor is reliant on the functionality of the motor and circuitry in order to work. Battery backups are another method to achieve fail-safe on an electric actuator. We can also put backup electrical systems in this same category. Advantage is a fail-safe position mid-stroke can be achieved with this technology, say 42% open, for example. Disadvantages are the large size and extra cost and effort required to source and set up a battery backup system or redundant electrical system. Batteries also don't last forever, and need to be maintained and or replaced. This can be quite a task in remote applications. And again, like the supercapacitor, a battery backup system is still fundamentally reliant on the motor and electrical system to operate in a fail-safe loss of power condition. So if there was damage to that system, a battery backup may not cause the actuator to stroke. Mechanical spring return is what we believe is the best way to achieve fail-safe functionality with an electric actuator. Many people are familiar with the reliability and robustness of the Betis pneumatic actuators with spring return. Think of that reliability being coupled with an electric actuator. Now, the one downside to this technology is it does tend to be a bit heavier. However, with the Betis RTS and Torque Plus actuators from Emerson, you'll find the designs are still very compact and we've had great success installing them in tight applications. Advantages are that the spring is completely independent of the electrical system and motor. So we have a totally separate drive system, mechanical and electrical. In some extreme situation, if there was a catastrophic failure to the electrical system, the actuator will still stroke with the power stored in that spring. Spring returns are completely maintenance free. No need to worry about checking on the health of batteries or supercapacitors. A spring return is simple, straightforward, and reliable. So in summary, there are three types of fail-safe methodologies with advantages and disadvantages to each. However, the mechanical spring return approach will give you the best guarantee of performance, reliability, and peace of mind. 
A related topic to fail-safe is SIL, or Safety Integrity Level. SIL ratings are basically a measure of risk of failure within a safety instrumented system. SIL ratings are from SIL 4, being the least risk, most robust system, down to SIL 1. In industrial environments, SIL 4 is basically impossible to achieve. So typically you'll see ratings of SIL 2 or SIL 3. Just a note here on SIL ratings. While we may say an actuator is rated SIL 2 or SIL 3, that does not mean in and of itself it is SIL 2 or SIL 3. It means that it's suitable for operation in a SIL 2 or SIL 3 environment. The end user or engineer will need to look at the DCS, valves, instrumentation, actuators, and so forth in the system in order to perform the calculations and determine if the environment as a whole complies to the SIL 2 or SIL 3 ratings. The actuator is one piece of the puzzle. Many electrical actuators in the market are rated as SIL 2 in a singular unit or SIL 3 if used redundantly. For example, to ensure shutoff, as in this picture, two Betis XTE 3000s are set up in series to achieve a SIL-3 rating on closure of the pipeline. If we needed to ensure that the pipeline opened, the two actuators would be set up in parallel. Again, this speaks to the idea of risk probability in a SIL system. With two actuators operating together, there is a reduced risk of failure in guaranteeing that that pipeline will either open or close as required. So while redundant actuators are the typical approach, we have a better solution with a Betis RTS actuator with mechanical fail-safe. With a partial stroke test enabled, we can achieve a SIL-3 capable actuator with a single unit. By having two separate drive systems inside that Betis RTS, one electrical and one mechanical, we are able to reduce the risk of failure within the system and increase that SIL capability. Using the Betis RTS with SIL-3 capability may enable the end user to reduce installation cost, time, and footprint. Let's take a quick look at which Betis electric actuators have SIL ratings. For SIL-2, we have the Betis XTE 3000, RTS, and EHO standard. These are all SIL-2 rated with a single actuator. For SIL-3, we have the RTS quarter turn and linear with mechanical failsafe as a single actuator. The EHO Smart is SIL-3 as a single unit, and also the XTE 3000 is SIL-3 when used in redundancy. We hope this video was helpful in giving you an understanding of failsafe functionality within electric actuators and some of the unique capabilities of the Betis RTS with mechanical failsafe. This technology is relatively new within the world of electric actuation. So if you'd like to get more information or speak to an Emerson expert, please don't hesitate to contact us. In our next video, we will introduce you to the typical approaches to setup, control, and monitoring of electric actuators.